But the, the warm-up one, I have two, three poems, and uh, two of them are free verse, and the third one is rhyming. And the first one is a little bit of a riddle. It's called Where. It has no real boundaries, but the middle has definite ends. Because you'll know when you're not there anymore. If you are somewhere, then you are not there. If you are anywhere, then you're not there. In fact, if you are there, it's not possible to be anywhere except in the middle, because it has no edge. Until you find your way, you're in the middle of nowhere. My day job, I'm a pilot, and uh, my alter ego is a writer, and uh, I'm working on my second novel, and uh, the third song, when I get to it, is actually a song that's going to be incorporated into my second novel. But uh, this poem is when my two worlds collided. It's an aviation-based poem called Sounds of Flight. I actually wrote all three um, of these this year, and this one I actually wrote this week. Thunk, thunk, thunk. It tells me my nose wheels are running over the center line lights, unnerving to some, but a desirable event on the takeoff roll. Every sound has a meaning. There are the obvious ones, the whining change in pitch as the engines spool up or wind back down. The way the whistle changes as our airspeed as well. The louder my first officer talks to me, we're clear to flight level 350. The louder the outside air is whooshing as she is talking over them and reveals that we are going faster. Clack, clack, clack is a sound I don't want to hear. It's a, it means we're going too fast. It's a warning. Click, 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 on the other hand, means the stabilizer trim is moving, another indication that we are changing speed and trimming to keep the flight controls light and manageable. There are chimes for all sorts of things. each with its own sound or specific number of them. One ding and we have a message on our printer. Two dings and the flight attendant wants to talk to us. Three dings and flight, three dings and we have to talk, something is up. One reason for three dings is when we're about to encounter turbulence. Nobody likes the knocking of the shaking aircraft. Four or more dings and the meeting is classified, sorry. <laughs> chirp, chirp, my first officer just disconnected the autopilot. I'm sorry, it's click, chirp, and my first officer just disconnected the autopilot. The click comes from a yoke button, and the chirp comes from the autopilot switch. All the time, the altimeter vibrator rattles like a woodpecker on glass, keeping our needles within our instruments from sticking. We even listen for a shift in the hiss of our internally circulating air when we turn on the engine or wing any ice to assure ourselves that it's working. Perhaps my favorite sound is the grinding followed by the clunk, clunk, clunk as all three landing gear lock into place. And no matter how smoothly I roll the old bird onto the runway, there's a chirp as the tires, sorry, chirp of the tires, I just want to repeat that part. <laughs> there's a chirp of the tires as they grip the pavement and rub while they spin up from perfectly still to 160 miles per hour in an instant. <laughs> Third song, uh, I actually wrote two novels, and in the novels they develop songs, so it's actually novels with a soundtrack, which is unique. And I took a fiction and poetry class at, at UMSL, and I tried to write poetry, and my professor said, you're writing lyrics, you don't have the grasp of poetry. So, never one for accepting criticism, I wrote this one to prove that I could write poetry. <laughs> and the irony is, I posted it. It doesn't have a verse structure, a verse score structure. I wrote it strictly as poetry, but then I posted it on an online, online songwriting community that I belong to. And a guy up in Wisconsin, he turned it into a five minute ballad. So after I read it, I'll try to play it. And it's that. a cool one too. <laughs> I pay him. <laughs> it's called a veteran, and I also wrote this to bring awareness to post-traumatic stress disorder. The movie ends, I part with friends, I head back to my familiar street and reheat leftovers to eat. I brush my teeth and wash my face and look around my familiar place. 
The pictures hang upon the walls in every room and down the halls. Old friends, long gone since the war, I retreat to my room and I close the door. It's getting late, so I close my eyes, but flashbacks come full of those other guys. They are gone and I am here, and they continue to whisper in my ear. New movies roll, but they're less fun. I'm back on patrol with my M1. It's been years since I carried a gun, but I still remember how it's done. The flash comes first, followed by a deafening burst. We hope for the best and prepare for the worst. A return fire follows, it's the sounds of hell, and our hand and our hand dug trench fills with a smoky gunpowder smell. Half awake, I call out half a dozen names, but no reply comes from those picture frames. Patches of green and black and tan blur the silhouette of every man. But fragging bombs don't need to see, nor do other forms of artillery. They cut indiscriminately into the night while we try to aim and return the fight. In the morning light, I'll see what I did to you and you tried to do to me. Silence seems to swallow the day, at least in contrast, it seems that way. The earth tones worn by so many dead reveal too many shades of red. The brightness of the blood that's new trips over dry, flaking blood with a darker hue. Instead of my gun, I aim my lens in a at those who once were my friends. I silently vow not to forget, and to this day, I haven't yet. When my alarm clock rings and I struggle to wake, I toss and I turn, I shiver, I shake. I'll be late again and my boss will yell. He's never had to live through hell. My days are pretty normal now. It's the nights I have to survive somehow.